Greetings, this is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Get your King James Bibles. Please turn it to the book of Revelation, chapter 17, starting in verse 1. And there came one of the seven angels... All right, so, and there came one of the seven angels which had the seven vials. So this is during the tribulation period. And talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will show thee the judgment of the great whore that, that sitteth upon many waters. Verse 2, of whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast, full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand, having a golden cup in her hand, full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. So this woman is dressed in purple, which is a color of royalty, decked with gold, precious stones, and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. Now, purple means royalty. And if you look at purple, scarlet, gold, precious stones, and pearls, People are quick to point out, well, that's that's the Catholic Church's priesthood. Yeah, but it was also the same type of colors and materials were used for the Levitical priesthood in the book of Leviticus. So, having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations... Well, let's take a look at Jeremiah chapter 5. I'm sorry, 51. Jeremiah 51, verse 5. For Israel hath not been forsaken, nor Judah of his God. For the Lord of hosts through their land was filled with sin against the Holy One of Israel. Flee, flee out of the midst of Babylon. And deliver every man his soul. Be not cut off in her iniquity. For this is the time of the Lord's vengeance. He will render, render unto her a recompense. Babylon hath been a golden cup, a golden cup in the Lord's hand that made all the earth drunken. The nations have drunken of her wine. Therefore the nations are mad. Babylon is suddenly fallen and destroyed. Howl for her. Take balm for her pain. If so be, she may be healed. So, whoever this woman is, she has a, uh, in her hand a golden cup full of abominations. What are some abominations? Eating Shellfish was an abomination. Eating pork was an abomination. In Leviticus 18.22, uh, Thou shalt not lie, and we're talking about l lying on a bed, not telling fibs. Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is abomination. In Leviticus 20 and verse 13, 
I wish the Hebrew roots and Torah keepers would uh, pay attention to this. If a man also lie with mankind as he lieth with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination. They shall surely be put to death. Their blood shall be upon them. Graven images of gods, that's an abomination. Uh, worshiping other gods or idols, that was an abomination. Uh, Deuteronomy 2018, that they teach you not to do after all their abominations, which, which they have done under their gods, so should ye sin against the Lord your God. Uh, you want to know why they're doing all this transgender garbage? Deuteronomy 22, verse 5. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man, neither shall a man put on a woman's garment, for all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. Here's another good one. Deuteronomy 23, 18. Thou shalt not bring the hire of a whore or the price of a dog into the house of the Lord thy God for any vow, for even both of these are abomination unto the Lord thy God. In other words, you get a prostitute, you know, you're not going to let her come to the church and, you know, donate money for whatever reason. So what's the dog? Well, guess what? Parallelism. Let's read the previous verses. Deuteronomy 23, verse 17. There shall be no whore of the daughters of Israel, nor a sodomite of the sons of Israel. Thou shalt not bring the hire of a whore or the price of a dog. So the whore is the woman, and the dog is the sodomite, according to the word of God. Deuteronomy 23. So thou shalt not bring the hire of a whore or the prize of a dog into the house of the Lord of the Lord thy God for any vow, for even both these are abomination unto the Lord thy God. You want to know what the gay capital of the Middle East is? Tel Aviv, the official capital of the Israeli state. Yeah, look it up. Look up Jerusalem Gay Pride Parade. Look it up on YouTube. All right, let's see. Deuteronomy 27, 15. Cursed be the man that maketh any graven or molten image, an abomination unto the Lord, the work of the hands of the craftsmen, and put it, putteth it in a secret place, and all the people shall answer and say, Amen. In 2 Kings 16, verse 3, uh, passing your children through the fire to burn them alive to the abominations of the heathen, uh, which is uh, Milcom and uh, Moloch. That was another abomination. Here you go. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 16. These six things doth the Lord hate, Yea, seven are an abomination unto him, a proud look, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood, and heart that deviseth wicked imaginations, feet that be swift in running to mischief, a false witness that speaketh lies, and he that soweth discord among brethren." All right, so I think we get an idea of abominations. Let's go back to Revelation chapter 17. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery. Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots 
and abominations of the earth. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. And there's people who tell you, well, this is the Catholic Church because they killed uh, the saints and the blood of martyrs of Jesus. Well, yeah, they did, but there were others that did it before the Catholic Church even existed. And we're going to cover that in a few minutes. Verse 7, And the angel said unto me, Wherefore didst thou marvel? I will tell thee the mystery of the woman and of the beast that carrieth her, which hath the seven heads and ten horns. The beast that thou sawest was and is not and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit and go into perdition. And they that dwell on the earth shall wonder whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world when they behold the beast that was and is not and yet is. And here is the mind which hath wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sitteth. And um, yeah, Rome is on seven mountains, but guess what? So is Jerusalem. And there are seven kings, five are fallen, and one is, and the other is not yet come. And when he cometh, he must continue a short space. And the beast that was and is not, even he is the eighth, and is of the seven, and goeth into perdition. And the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings which have received no kingdom as yet, but receive power as kings one hour with the beast. These have one mind, and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. These shall make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb shall overcome them, for he is Lord of lords and King of kings, and they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. And he saith unto me, The waters which thou sawest, where the whore sitteth, are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. And the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, these shall hate the whore, and shall make her desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh, and burn her, burn her with fire. For God hath put in their hearts to fulfill his will, and to agree and give their kingdom unto the beast, until the words of God shall be fulfilled. And the woman which thou sawest is that great city which reigneth over the kings of the earth. Now, if you don't know where the great city is, I suggest you look at Revelation chapter 11 and verse 8. It says, now this is speaking about the two witnesses, of which Elijah is going to be one. It says, and their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt where also our Lord was crucified. Now, where was your Lord crucified? Well, I don't know about you, but Jesus was crucified in Jerusalem, not Rome. Not Rome. Now, people will say, well, you know, yeah, he was technically crucified in Jerusalem, but it was the Romans that killed him. Well, Pontius Pilate was the Roman curator of Jerusalem at this time. But when you read the 19th chapter of John, specifically the 12th verse, well, let's read it in context. Let's start in verse 10. Then saith Pilate unto him, Speaking to Jesus, right? Speakest thou not unto me? Knowest thou not that I have power to crucify thee and have power to release thee? Jesus answered, Thou couldst have no power at all against me, except it were given thee from above. Therefore he that delivered me unto thee hath the greater sin. And from thenceforth 
Pilate sought to release him. And from thenceforth, Pilate sought to release him. Pilate wanted to release Jesus and let him go. And from thenceforth, Pilate sought to release him. But the Jews, but the Jews cried out, saying, If thou let this man go, thou art not Caesar's friend. Whosoever maketh himself a king speaketh against Caesar. Now, does that sound like the Romans wanted him dead? Uh, no. In the King James Bible, in the book of John, chapter 5 and verse 16, And therefore did the Jews, the Jews persecute Jesus and sought to slay him, because he had done these things on the Sabbath day. Verse 18, Therefore the Jews sought the more to kill him, because he had not only broken the Sabbath, but said also that God was his father, making himself equal with God. John 7 and verse 1. After these things, Jesus walked in Galilee, for he would not walk in Jewry because the Jews sought to kill him. Acts 9.23 and after that many days were fulfilled, the Jews took counsel to kill him. We're talking about Paul here, I think. Acts 23, 12. And when it was day, certain of the Jews banded together, not the Romans, certain of the Jews banded together and bound themselves under a curse, saying that they would neither eat nor drink till they had killed Paul. You ever wonder why the Hebrew Roots people don't like Paul? Acts 23, 12. Acts 26, 21. For these causes the Jews caught me in the temple and went about to kill me. What did Jesus tell the Pharisee Jews in Matthew 23, 15? Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees. A Pharisee is a Jew. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye compass sea and land to make one proselyte, and when he is made, ye make him twofold more the child of hell than yourselves. How would you like Jesus to tell you you're twice the child of hell? Wow. Now, Paul tells you in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, starting in verse 14, who killed Jesus. For ye, brethren, became followers of the churches of God, which in Judea are in Christ Jesus. For ye also have suffered like things of your own countrymen, even as they have of the Jews, who both killed the Lord Jesus and their own prophets, and have persecuted us, Let's read that again. For ye also have suffered like things of your own countrymen, even as they have of the Jews, who both killed the Lord Jesus and their own prophets, and have persecuted us, and they please not God. And they please not God, and are contrary to all men, forbidding us to speak to the Gentiles that they might be saved, to fill up their sins alway for the wrath is come upon them to the uttermost. Are you starting to figure out who the mystery Babylon is? Matter of fact, the Jews' most holy book is a book called the Babylonian Talmud. Talmud means learning. So that means Babylonian learning or learning from Babylon. Mystery Babylon? Oh, yeah. Look it up on Amazon. You can buy it. It's quite expensive. And they have it in English, too. Now, if you think Jerusalem is so holy, how about Isaiah 3 and verse 8? For Jerusalem is ruined and Judah is falling because their tongue and their doings are against, against 
the Lord to provoke the eyes of his glory. Jeremiah 4.14 O Jerusalem, wash thine heart from wickedness, that thou mayest be saved. How long shall thy vain thoughts lodge within thee? Jeremiah 8.5 Why then is this people of Jerusalem slidden back by a perpetual backsliding? You know what perpetual means? It means forever. They hold fast deceit, they refuse to return. Jeremiah 13, 27. I have seen thine adulteries and thy nayings, the lewdness of thy whoredom, and thy abominations on the hills and the fields. Woe unto thee, O Jerusalem! Wilt thou be made clean? When shall it once be? Wow. Malachi 2.11 Judah hath dealt treacherously, and an abomination is committed in Israel and in Jerusalem. For Judah hath profaned the holiness of the Lord, which he loved, and hath married the daughter of a strange God. Let's read Revelation 11.8 again. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. So Jerusalem is called spiritually Sodom and Egypt. What did Jesus say in Matthew 23, verse 37? O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets. God didn't send the prophets to Rome. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets and stonest them that are sent unto thee how often would I have gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathereth her chickens under her wings, and ye would not. In Revelation 18.24, it says, And in her, Babylon, and in her was found the blood of prophets and of saints and of all that were slain upon the earth. Revelation 16.6, 6, For they have shed the blood of saints and prophets, prophets, and thou hast given them blood to drink, for they are worthy. Didn't we just read in Revelation 17.6, And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. And yet Jesus was speaking in Luke 13.33, Nevertheless, I must walk today and tomorrow and the day following, for it cannot be that a prophet perish out of Jerusalem. You still think it's Rome? Really? So, you know, uh, when you get these Jews like Joel Richardson writing books about the Islamic Antichrist, and you get Walid Shobat, who's a Catholic, uh, you know, he's the Islamic Antichrist, and, you know, and then you get um, people saying, oh, well, you know, it's Mecca, it's uh, Istanbul, and then you got the people that claim it's Rome, and it's a pope named Peter, what was his name? I forget, he's one of Joel... Uh, Chuck Missler's buddies, Tom Horn, I think it was, you know, a pope named Peter and space aliens coming out of the sky in their spaceships hovering over the Vatican. And people eat this stuff up. They'll read anything except for the Bible to get their information. These people deserve to be deceived. And while you're looking at Rome or Mecca or Istanbul, um, Istanbul, or New York City, or the USA, it's going to be Jerusalem, people. Keep your eye on Jerusalem. That is mystery Babylon. They're going to rebuild the temple, which is a slap in the face of what Jesus did on the cross in his shed blood. They're going to do animal sacrifices, which is a denial of the crucifixion of Christ. 
his sinless crucifixion. And uh, the man of sin is going to raise himself up in the temple and uh, proclaim himself that he's God. Here you go, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 1. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means. For that day, what day? The second coming, the day of Christ. For that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Didn't we read about the, uh, the king that would be uh, going to perdition in Revelation 17? We just read that. For that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worship, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Now, there's people who tell you that this happened in 70 AD. I don't think so. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you I told you these things? And now ye know that uh, what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Did you see Jesus with the brightness of his coming? Uh, me neither. I guess we missed that in 70 AD, according to the preterists. Whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming, even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believed not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. But we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren beloved of the Lord, because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the spirit and belief of the truth whereunto he called you by our gospel to the obtaining of the glory of our lord jesus christ therefore brethren stand fast and hold the traditions which ye have been taught whether by word or our epistle now our lord jesus christ himself and god even our father which hath loved us and hath given us everlasting consolation and good hope through grace Comfort your hearts and establish you in every good word and work. Amen to that. All right, well, all that's the end of this part. And uh, cup of the cup of wrath of Mystery Babylon, the great and the whore. So, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world. And that's Jesus who is the Christ in his precious name. Amen.